we try and empower uh, ladies in the villages by forming them into uh, what they call self-help groups. And then uh, it's, a, it's a really very uh, workable thing. Uh, say they make a group of 10 ladies and uh, each one puts in, say, uh, one dollar or something. And then uh, whoever wants to do some business, they use that money. And uh, then when she's done with, then it can be given to some other. So this is working beautifully. And uh, we've done about 5,000 self-help groups. This is one. And then we do skill trading, like uh, uh, some of the arts, like basket weaving, carpet weaving, or uh, tailoring. And uh, then, you know, once they get trained, then they are on their own. And surprisingly, people are learning, um, are putting up a beauty palace, even in the villages. So uh, that is creating employment. That was one. And then we help schools, like uh, there's one school, a government-run school called uh, Kasturba Gandhi. And there we provide with clothes and books and all that. And so, and ladies are very smart. They are really wanting to come to the level. And uh, we have, in our group, we have 20,000 ladies working, which is approximately 20% of our whole strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, does this woman, do this woman uh, fear to get business, to um, introduce in the world of the business because it's a world of, a man, of men? No, nowadays, uh, ladies are also doing a lot of business. Like uh, my granddaughter, who's just 25 years old, uh, she's, into, um, she's into home loans. She has uh, NBFC, so she's helping many ladies, or any needy person. And uh, so that, that's the, the thing. Uh -huh. Now we have an um, uh, interview to a, to a man of a bank, a bank manager, and I explain us that they are, it's very famous, a Jan Dan account for population, uh, uh, especially for women. Jan Dan no? <coughs> account. Jan Dan account. Oh, That's not only for ladies. Huh. Especially for women. And then uh, th those women are especially um, for, um, get to the instruction special for this business because now in they have right of to have an account with a uh, husband no? so uh, they are prepared to to get a business to do business yes now in she can get money but what in they uh, they are prepared to choose what kind of business can they do Yes. So, what's the question? And, and the question is, what the, if she, if she, those women have enough preparation, have enough studies to start a, a entrepreneurs, to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yes, ladies uh, are becoming entrepreneurs. Uh, they take up a, a small job, mm -hmm. and then they grow, and then they again go into uh, another line. So they are growing up. And um, with uh, Mr. Modi, our Prime Minister, having uh, an account open for everyone mm -hmm. uh, is helping them. Okay. Um, how does your foundation uh, teach poor people to be self-reliant, as Gandhi says? Um, we run many uh, skill trainings. And uh, uh, right now we run about 18 uh, in 18 places skill centers where children are given uh, skill training and they are employed in the nearby uh, factories, manufacturing factories. And sometimes they also uh, take, uh, they train children in whatever the, the factories are in need of. So that's a specific training. And we also train them in doing painting, painting the wall. So several types, whatever the area needs.
Mm-hmm. So actually, you can talk about the Birla White Applicator Training. Mm-hmm. 8,000 people are trained. Yeah, mm-hmm. 100,000 mm-hmm. farmers mm-hmm. are trained mm-hmm. every year mm-hmm. in multi-cropping. Mm-hmm. And there are uh, 40,000 trained mm-hmm. with the Aditya Birla mm-hmm. Skills mm-hmm. Technology mm-hmm. Park mm-hmm. and other uh, you know, skill mm-hmm. developments. Mm-hmm. Like every village they have this fitter. You know, every plant has. Mm-hmm. So nearly every year, 300,000 people are trained. You can tell them that. 300,000 300, people. 300,000 people are trained. So can you see? No, no. Yes, but she'll, you'll take out some points from there, no? Yeah. See. Uh, now, training is very important in India. And... Um, People are planning how to train youngsters or people who need to work. And um, like our group has opened a lot of vocational training centers. Uh, there they are uh, taught, uh, you know, like uh, fitter, tailoring, mechanics, and then they get jobs. So uh, the training is very uh, important. Mm-hmm. And yeah. our focus is on it. So, Rajshad, you can say that 300,000 people are trained every year uh, if we take all our 45 plants. So, if uh, this happens in all our 45 plants, uh, if we put together, we train about uh, 330,000 people every year. Todos los años, 300,000 personas trenadas. Sí, 300,000 personas trenadas. Ya tienes básicamente 45 puestos, 45 sitios que pueden hacer la educación. De, a 300,000 personas y 45 sitios. Mm, 45 sitios, mm. puestos. Uh, do you still <coughs> believe in self-reliance? In this, um, in, in this uh, slogan, conviction, do you still believe in this? In, in self-reliance, yes, of course. Hmm? That's really important. In India, wh- why still is uh, is uh, on fashion? Why? Uh, what, no. is, what was your question? In mm-hmm. India, why is it? Is, if she thinks that the self reliance is still, she remains still in the um, work of life in India. Yes. Yes. Uh, See, basically, Mahatma Gandhi, um, on his words, he was saying that uh, Indian will be a great place. If you if the people will be self reliant, so that that's what she means. So she wants to talk about the the phrase he used to say. So already, Rajshri, we are the uh, training centers are like training centers are there, but you know, Indian economy has grown so much, and the prime minister has said that in th- in another three four years time we'll become a five trillion economy. So as the economy is growing, people are getting. Uh, you know, employment and poverty level is just 20 percent now. With more than five, 400 millions of poor people, how can you work on their needs, feeling encouraged, and I mean, um, uh, without losing the hope? How is it possible? Do you understand? No, not fully. Sorry. No, I, I want to say how what she's saying is uh-huh. that so many people are under the poverty line. But if you take from 1947 to today, in 47, when the British left us, 70% people were below the poverty line. Today it's only 20%. And the government has introduced so many schemes. So you can talk about a house for everyone by 2022. And uh, you know, he's given farmers money. So you can talk about the PM. She's a, no. she means as well. She remembers everything. No, I think how it's possible well. to work with so many, oh, oh, so 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 many but people you know, poor ma'am. and no yeah. losing your hope. How is possible to be encouraged? She means, yes. she means that just so much, so many people to help. And how do you feel? How do you find your strengths to still helping these people and working hard on these people? So to help the She's people. She's the greatest leader. We have 2,000 people in our CSR community, you know. Only all masters in social work, only working for the poor. And ma'am herself visits about 20 villages in a year, you know. Yes. So her personal involvement is very much. The yes. soul is in with the poor. Yes. yes. But yes. as you said, our population is so big. Uh, so big that, you know, 
uh, whatever people do is not that much enough. The government has to take the lead. So recently we have a very good Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. Mm. He's focusing on poor people, like he's uh, built roads, he's put, uh, there were many villages had no lights and no toilets. So in the last mm. five years he built about uh, one crore, uh, one hundred thousand um, okay. toilets. As your philanthropic woman, which is your main message to Spain? I would say that, uh, you know, giving is living. Because if you give to others, uh, you know, somehow you get back more than what you give. And it really gives you a happiness, a feeling of satisfaction. And uh, so it's a very, everyone must uh, rise beyond themselves and try and give to the more needy ones. Is that okay? In general, um, do you think it's what possible? Good. That's an amazing <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing question. See, yeah. Very important. How, fam how motto is think beyond yourself? <laughs> That's an amazing question. The answer is just an yeah. amazing answer. Do you think, do you believe it's possible to eradicate extreme poverty in India? Sorry? Eradication, eradication of poverty in India. Extreme poverty. Mm. Is it possible to eradicate? Uh, I think uh, it's happening slowly, slowly, and maybe in about next 20 years, there will be no poverty. That's uh, what we are hoping. And the government is working towards that. And what would you say to very, very rich people is in the top of the mountain in, 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 in India, and rich people, what can they do for, um, to eradicate the strength, strength poverty? I think many people are doing social work uh, around, they give, try and help people around the area and um, you know in India, in India people believe in donation so everyone does whatever they can so we have a good uh, ethos. Okay and I, I this morning I realized all people I haven't interviewed is very happy with the Prime Minister Modi. What do you think about him? We are very fortunate to have a very good Prime Minister after 70 years of independence, and he's uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. And he's really made a lot of uh, schemes to help the poor, like uh, he's uh, going to give electricity in all the villages, and there are toilets made for all the houses, and he has given, uh, you know, uh, uh, LPG gas, like cooking gas. Yes. Yes. Uh, cooking uh, gas. Uh, earlier they used to cook on you know, uh, ovens and they would collect wood from the forest. To, uh, toilets, so, the gas. And uh, his, uh, you know, so far the subsidies which were supposed to be given to the poor were not reaching them. They used to be just uh, taken by the officers and hardly 15% uh, would reach to the poor. But now Mr. Modi has uh, uh, has accounts open for each and every person in the village mm -hmm. and whatever subsidies are sent, they are sent directly into their account. Yes. So, yes. Los de los bancos que sí, sí, this is very, sí. very interesting idea, very, very powerful idea for women, mm. for people, for young people. Um, more than 44% 40 of women are housekeepers in India, which is the solution to integrate these women in the market without losing your old traditions. Uh, I think ladies can start working at home. They can do some small, small uh, businesses, like making some uh, embroidery clothes, selling them. But, people, but ladies are wanting to go out. Yes, so, yeah, they so, want to leave the yes, yes. Yeah. But they, they, they feel happy. They feel very happy. Very happy. Um, have you ever feel gender discrimination in all, all your life, working as a woman in a very uh, different country in your country, have you ever felt gender discrimination? Uh, yes, there is a lot. But in Though now it's group, becoming it's less. Not, yeah. uh, but in general, there is a lot. Like, yes. uh, Nobody is. Uh, even nowadays. Uh, one thing comes to my mind is, you know, they don't have uh, par uh, parity in, 
in their income and they are not paid um, equal to what they pay the gents. So there are... But do you feel this discrimination, gender, in all, uh, in all caste of the society, height, medium level, in all, in respect to the yes. men's? In yes, all. in all. No, no, it's better with a high level, no. Uh, in, in, in the higher levels, it's becoming less. Because, uh, you know, now, nowadays, uh, many girls fight for their rights. So, in the, in the higher, uh, higher class... Different is not the same opportunities, no. No, they don't get. But mm. I think slowly, slowly, this will change. Yeah. But I think it's very difficult as a woman who was to be an entrepreneur uh, fight uh, with the, with this discrimination, no? Yes, that is. It's very difficult. Yeah, but now it's becoming less mm -hmm. because they are also voicing out, and they want to have the rights, and even even the whole public, they want to. I mean, the women causes are supported, mm -hmm. but uh, such a big population of uh, 1.7 billion, so it's a little difficult, but it will happen. One point, I think we have 1.3 now. 1.3, yeah. We're finished. You can talk about okay, that. Uh, See, we final. have ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, where there is a woman to send the second spaceship up. There's a woman director and there's a woman mission leader. And 30% of ISRO space station are women. Oh. So finally, in, is your family involved in your foundation, this foundation? Yes. Yes. Is uh, your son is your son going to keep the the next generation working in this foundation? Yes, because it's a family. Uh, we we think it as, as if it's a legacy. This was started by my grandfather-in-law, Mr. G. D. Birla, uh, who was a very close confidant of Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. And he was a ardent follower and <coughs> a supporter of Mahatma Gandhi. Okay. And thereby he imbibed the philosophy of uh, of uh, trusteeship. Of trusteeship. Yeah. Like which means that whatever you have doesn't belong to you only. You should just spend how much is necessary mm -hmm. and the rest should be given to people who need it. So this philosophy is like a legacy for us and so we try and really follow it. And even my, my granddaughter who's only, uh, who was only 18 years old and she started a company called uh, Microfinance. So she would uh, go into the villages and give loans to people who want to do some business. So it is already continuing. <laughs> okay, well, finally, what is your dream for India? Uh, my dream is that India should become poverty free and everyone should uh, get equal rights and uh, people should be, their happiness quotient must be very, very high. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> what is the new project, please? <laughs> <laughs> Donald Gandhi. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mahatma Gandhi was very close to our family and uh, he used to, whenever he was in Delhi, he used to live in our house. Even uh, about 80, year, 80 days of his last li life, I mean 80, 80 days of his life, he spent in Birla House. And now we have converted it into a, uh, we call it Eternal Gandhi and we uh, We've kept lots of multimedia exhibitions to talk about Gandhiji's life, his teachings, and so. Okay, yeah, they have thank you. Very nice.